analysis, and planning. The first step in a diamond micro-trenching project, as well as in any infrastructure project, is a good executed planning phase. Since we are sawing with the diamond-mounted blade, moving at 1000 RPM, this step is even more important. We gather data from utility owners and permitters in the area, analyze that together with the network design provided by our customer. We then bring this information with us out on site and apply it to the real conditions in the project area. In places where we can see that our trench will cross existing utilities, we secure that the collected data is correct with the help of GEO radar. Discrete objects, such as utilities, typically produce characteristic features, so-called hyperbolas, in the resulting radar gram shown on the screen of the device. If we find that the existing utilities can be at risk of damage, we make a mini-pit to secure the depth of the cable crossing. When the best position for our trench has been determined, we make a marking on the ground. This is done to guide the operator when sawing the trench. Preparing the machines. The machine gets mounted with the duct dimensions and colors shown in the customer design. The most common duct dimensions in FTTH rollouts are 7, 14, and 16 millimeters. Depending on the hardness of the ground, we have three different steel configurations of the diamond discs, soft, medium, and hard. Cross sign. The first sawing on the street is made at the locations where the fiber duct needs to cross the street to reach houses on the other side. This enables the duct to be laid down in the crossing trench immediately when the large machine passes for the lengthways sawing, remaining protected and without the need for a connector in the ground under the asphalt. Sawing lengthways. In the lengthways sawing, several steps are carried out one after the other. Mounted at the rear of the machine is the diamond-mounted blade that cuts the trench. In the installation that we see here, we cut 24 millimeters wide and 48 centimeters, or 18.9 inches deep. Right behind the saw blade, a plow and laying box are positioned, allowing for the immediate installation of ducts, protective fillings, signal wires, and warning tape. Since the sawing depth remains constant at the same level and ducts are laid directly behind the saw blade, the placement of the ducts in the ground also remains constant. This, along with the reduced number of connectors, provides favorable conditions for later blowing the fiber cable into the duct. Low impact on everyday life. The narrow trench and the high progress rate also have significant advantages for people moving within the rollout area. Since vehicles can pass over the trench unhindered, it has less impact on the daily traffic for pedestrians and motorists compared to traditional excavation. It also creates better conditions for emergency responders during urgent situations. Backfilling and compacting. When protective sand and warning tape are in place, the remaining trench is filled with crushed four to eight millimeter stone material. The stone material is then compacted using a vibrating compaction wheel mounted on a skid steer. The compaction is performed with three passes to ensure that the material cannot settle later. This forms the foundation for a successful end result without cracks or settlements. Excess materials are cleaned up and dumped into a container for further transport to a landfill. Before the final pass with the compaction wheel, the depth is adjusted for the upcoming asphalt restoration so that it meets the required asphalt thickness by the road owner. Pits that have been excavated to ensure the depth for existing utilities and changes in direction are manually compacted and backfilled. Cleaning before surface restoration. Before asphalt is applied, asphalt edges are cleaned using a diamond mill. Restoration then needs to take place within a couple of hours to maintain the edge's cleanliness. The smaller debris that the brush doesn't get needs to be blown away with a leaf blower. As a final step, the smallest debris, which the leaf blower can't remove either, is cleaned up with a dry sponge. Surface restoration with trench flex. The restoration material used is a custom-made bitumen-based product called trench flex. It is delivered from our own factory in Fujesta and comes packaged in convenient boxes 
that are placed in the on-site asphalt cooker. With in-house production, adjustments to the recipe can be made depending on the conditions of the specific project. For the application, a mini paver is used. It's crucial to maintain the temperature of trench flex as close to 195 degrees Celsius or 383 degrees Fahrenheit as possible throughout the laying process. This is to ensure that the bitumen in the new and existing materials melt together, creating a durable joint. In front of the mini paver, a jet blaster is used to preheat the asphalt edges before laying. Inside the laying shoe, there is a propane heater that further preheats the asphalt edges to prevent temperature loss in the trench flex material during installation, allowing the two materials to fuse together. Now, all the preparation pays off. The work is carried out in the right weather condition. The materials are properly compacted. The asphalt edges are clean. The right type of restoration material is used. And it is the correct temperature when laid so that the materials bond together. After just a few minutes, the trench flex has cooled and dried enough to allow passage over the trench in the same way as before the cutting was performed. Diamond Micro Trenching is a modern method for the installation of electrical and optical fiber infrastructure. Compared to traditional techniques that are often used, there are many advantages of diamond micro trenching, just to mention a few of them. Environmental benefits. It saves on the environment by cutting down emissions both in the implementation process and by reducing the need of transportation of materials. It also keeps the amount of plastic that is put down in the ground to the absolute minimum that is required for the rollout. Cost effective. It saves cost by keeping down the amount of required restoration, as well as the amount of project management needed. The flexibility in duct configurations also means that the customer does not need to pay for ducts that will never be used. Quicker rollout phase. A high progress per day enables the customer to provide his services and reach more households in a shorter timeline, which gives him a competitive advantage. Less disturbance. Due to its narrow and targeted trenching, it causes less disruption to roadways, sidewalks, and other infrastructure, reducing inconvenience to the public. In-house production. In our own workshop, we manufacture diamond blades and trench flex. The diamond segments are custom ordered according to our own recipe and are welded onto jaws by a robot, which are then mounted on reusable core blades. This allows us to save both on the environment and costs. Today, we produce blades with diameters ranging from 900 to 1200 millimeters and widths of 24 or 34 millimeters. Diamond Micro Trenching, a sustainable alternative. Since we started with diamond micro trenching, we have cut 1.5 million meters, or 5 million feet, and passed more than 50,000 households. When done correctly, Diamond Micro Trenching also provides a sustainable road restoration. Here, we can see micro trenching being performed as early as 2013. My name is Roland Martin. I work for uh, Flens Municipality as head of the fiber network, and I'm a project leader for all the builds that we do. The reason we chose micro trenching is time, money, and environment. Uh, the pro project we did was about 30,000 meters. Um, it was, we had planned for a two year build with a budget of 1.6 million euros. After we were done, we did, built it in one year and at less than 1 million euros. Could diamond micro trenching be an option for your FTTH rollout project? Don't hesitate to reach out to us to discuss your current needs and how micro trenching could benefit your projects.